All right, in this video, we're gonna cover spotting and how it works in this system. Now, in this game, just because you have line of sight and can see your enemy does not mean that you can automatically see him in the game, that your troops can actually observe them and fire upon them. You have to do what's called spotting them before you're actually able to open fire on them, all right? Now, it's not troops and units and counters that are spotted in the game, but the hex itself, all right? So once the hex is spotted, all the units in that hex are going to be considered spotted, okay? Now, there are markers that will automatically make a unit spotted. If a unit is marked with a moved, salt moved, hit and run, fired, or a melee marker, that means that they're spotted and they can be fired on and acted against. Also, all open terrain, like our roads here and these open fields, that is always spotted. So units moving through those hexes will automatically be spotted and not have to be, not have to have a spotting attempt made against them. Terrain like our light woods, heavy woods, bushes or buildings, this is degrading and blocking terrain, and those are the types of terrain that spotting attempts or other effects need to be made to take and have the unit be spotted. Now, one other way that a unit can be spotted is simply by having an enemy unit adjacent to them. So like our German squad here, that's adjacent to our American squad in the building, they're in blocking terrain by being in this building, but by having the German squad adjacent to them, that automatically means they're spotted without having to have some type of marker applied to them. However, if our German squad were instead shaken, they no longer would be spotted at that point. The unit has to be in good order to take and spot adjacent enemies. Vehicles can also take and uh, affect spotting mechanics to a certain extent. If they're in open field, they're going to automatically be considered spotted, but they do make the terrain considered degrading for line of sight purposes and target modifiers. It's just going to defend, uh, depend on how many vehicles are in the hex. So in our hex here, where there's just one stug and a leg unit, the stug would not get the target modifier that would apply, but the leg units would since there's one vehicle in the hex. The hex would be considered degrading for line of sight purposes passing through it. Now, if two stugs were in the hex, all the units then would be getting the target modifier applied, but they would still be considered spotted for spotting purposes. Now, once a hex is spotted, it's going to stay spotted unless something affects it to cancel that out, which can happen back and forth between the turn. And what I mean by that is, let's say our American Airborne unit here is spotted because they're marked with a fired marker and they're later killed off. Well, the hex was spotted while they were in it, but once they're gone, that hex is no longer spotted. And if another friendly unit had moved into it, they would have to be spotted by some means before they could be acted against. Also for spotting purposes, when you're making an attempt to spot someone, if it's passing through two pieces of degrading terrain, that's gonna be considered blocking and they're not gonna have line of sight. Like our American unit here and our German squad, there's two pieces of degrading terrain, so they are considered to be blocked and they cannot see each other. Now you can make what's called a spotting attempt and it's relatively simple to do. As an example, our German squad here wish, wishes to make a spotting attempt against this American unit in the building. They're not marked with a marker, so they're not considered spotted. To do so, they would simply roll 1d6, and depending on what type of terrain it is, if it's blocking, it's gonna be a two or under, or if it's degrading, it's gonna be a three or under, at which point they're going to be considered spotted, and you would place a spotted marker on them, and at that point you could take and fire on them as normal. Any piece of degrading terrain that, that passes through is going to add a plus one modifier to your die roll. And remember again, if you're passing through two pieces of degrading terrain, that's going to cause it to be blocked instead and you won't be able to make the spotting attempt. Now you can only make the spotting attempt once per impulse, but it does not constitute your impulse. So if our German squad attempted a spot on the American squad, 
and failed it, they could still act in another manner, move, fire at another unit, but they could not make a separate spotting attempt or you couldn't have a different unit make a spotting attempt. You can only do it once per friendly impulse. Uh, there's one more little bit when it comes to spotting attempts. Some modern modules do have thermal imaging rules that will only apply in certain modern games and to certain vehicles. It'll be listed at the beginning of your scenario booklet, and this will apply a negative two die roll modifier uh, to spotting attempts, and it allows them to see through smoke.